Welcome to Midweek Mysteries, and thank you all for being here. I am your host, Nick Ryan. If you're new to the show, Midweek Mysteries is a shorter version of our full-length Sunday episodes, where we also enjoy giving a personal shout-out to our newest supporters, so please be sure to tune in. If you're interested in supporting what we do here, please visit us at patreon.com slash paranormalmysteries, or head on over to buymeacoffee.com slash paranormal, where you can make a simple one-time donation. And of course, subscribing to the podcast and sharing it with your friends is one of the best ways to show your support, and we appreciate it. Now let's see what today's storytellers have to say. Today's first midweek mystery comes to us from Candace. Candace's story is called Dream Invader. Candace says, Hello, Nick. I was recommended to listen to your podcast from my friend Amanda as we share a love for paranormal mysteries. I have many experiences, but the one I'm about to tell you freaks me out the most. I had just married my high school sweetheart, John, when he joined the military, and shortly after he was deployed. We lived on base at Fort Hood, and he thankfully adopted a dog from a shelter for me, as I do not like being alone, and our blue healer Todd, who he adopted, was a blessing when I was alone. One night, as I was crocheting a blanket in the living room late at night, I saw an eight-foot-tall white shadow person. I have never seen a white shadow person and could not find out anything about them. I got the feeling that it was a man, and his name was Edgar. I think it was about 2 a.m., and he walked very slowly from the hallway, across the living room, and around the couch where I was sitting. He looked at me, and then vanished. Our dog Todd was outside at the time, so I turned off the TV and went to go get him, and then went to bed, as I was very freaked out. Later that night, I was in a deep sleep, and I remember each of the three dreams that I had that week, but this night was the first day that it started. I dreamt I was in our bedroom, but my dog, who slept with me every night, was not there, and the room was dark, but I could see the room clearly. I saw the closet door open in my dream, and something dark and demonic came out. I do not know how I knew it was dark, but I just did. I immediately started praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must leave. Over and over again, I then started to be strangled in my sleep. I then woke up, and after a few minutes, I felt better and could move. The next night, I had the same dream, but in this dream, I got up and shut the closet door. I was also stabbed in my side in this dream, but when I woke up, I was okay, and I could move. The third night, I had the same dream, but after I shut the door, I ran out of the home and I looked back and saw the shadow person with red eyes in the window. I woke up and couldn't breathe. My dog was standing on the end of our bed, staring at the closet. I was too scared to get up and turn the light on, so I turned the flashlight on my phone on and looked to where my dog was staring. He then started growling and then went ballistic, so I went to the living room to sleep with our dog. I saged our home the next day and salted our closet. We moved Two years later, I have many more experiences that are just as freaky, and if you'd like to hear more, just let me know. This story still freaks me out and brings tears to my eyes. Thank you for reading, and keep up the fantastic work. Our next listener story comes to us from Michelle. Michelle's story is called Ghost in the Apartment. Michelle says, I really love your podcast even if I can't listen to it in my home because of my little sister. The women in my family are very sensitive to spiritual things, some more than others, as my sister is more sensitive than I am. I have more stories, but today I will be talking about my little sister, R. Back when I was about 12 or 13, and my sister was around 5 or 6, we lived in a small city in the Netherlands in a 12-floor building with small apartments. Most of the people living there were older people, and our town was known for its strange population, as there were a lot of elderly and student residents. It was not strange to hear almost every week an ambulance ride by, so it wouldn't surprise me if there were ghosts in our building, even in our own apartment. My mother, sister, and I agreed that there was something heavy in the living room. It was not aggressive, but you could feel that the ambiance there was different. Even if we put plants in there, they would die. 
One day, my grandparents stayed in my and my sister's room, so we needed to sleep in the living room for a week. The first day sleeping there, I could feel something watching me, but even if I looked around, I couldn't find anything. Then the next day, we were sleeping, until I woke up from the loud crying of my sister, who was sleeping right next to me. She called for my dad, and he came a couple of seconds after. She explained that she had seen a black shadow of a man looking straight down at us. He tried to talk to her, but he didn't have a voice. He was too nearby to be a shadow from outside, and even if it was, we lived on the 12th floor. We then moved to our parents' room. Even though it was three years ago, my sister still has problems sleeping alone, and she has constant nightmares. That's why we try to avoid telling scary stories around her. Thank you for reading this. Our next story of the night comes from Juan. Juan's story is called Haunted House. Juan says, I've always had paranormal experiences as a kid. At one point, I almost thought it was normal. It wasn't until I got out of that house that I realized that the house we lived in was very strange and haunted. One particular story that I want to share with you and the listeners was in high school. It was March, and it was Monday at 6 a.m. My alarm went off, and like a lot of people, I hit snooze. When I was little and I didn't want to get out of bed, my mom used to pull my socks and leave them halfway on, and it would irritate me, so I would sit up and fix them. After I hit the snooze button, I tried to squeeze in a few more minutes of sleep, but all of a sudden I felt something hit my feet, and it reminded me of what my mom used to do to get me to wake up, so I thought it was my mom. After a few minutes, though, I remembered that my door was locked, and I was the only one in my room, so I ignored it. I laid there on my stomach, and I felt as if the bed vibrated. I turned on my right side and heard my computer chair roll just a little, and we had a wood tile floor, so trust me, I heard it, and I was also a light sleeper, but again, I just ignored it. Then I felt a spot in my bed sink in, as if someone sat on the bed. I quickly rolled on my back, which was a bad idea. I felt something push me into the bed, and I heard the springs in my mattress compress. I got scared, and with all my strength, I pushed up, as if I were bench pressing, which pulled the covers off of my face, revealing a black shadow over me. It then quickly vanished. I got dressed super fast, and I was the first person at the bus stop that morning. I told my mom, but she brushed it off, and we told nobody. I slept in the spare bedroom for a month until my sister came to stay with us. I didn't say anything to her and just acted as normal. One day I got home from school, and my mom was waiting outside for me. The bus dropped me off about two houses down so she could see me from the porch as I got off the bus. She asked me, why did you skip school today? I told her, I didn't. You just saw me get off the bus. She said yes. But then she told me that in the morning my sister was going to work, that she got in her car but forgot something in the house, so she went back inside. When she went into the house and turned the corner into the hallway, she saw me or something go into my room and close the door. This really tripped me out. My parents worked from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. and sometimes until midnight, so I was alone 95% of the time. I had a few friends that came over, and they would tell me that they would see shadows move, but didn't want to say anything to me. It was normal for my computer chair to roll around at night, and pencils to roll off of my desk and smack the wooden tile floor at night. I had a friend who was a heavy skeptic in the paranormal, but visiting my house made him a believer. If you're interested in hearing that story, do let me know. Thank you. Respectfully yours, Juan. Our next story comes to us from Shane. Shane's story is called Reality Shift or Ghost. Shane says, Hey Nick, love your show. It's by far my favorite of all the podcasts I listen to. This story is a bit strange, and I'm still trying to figure out if this actually happened or if I'm going crazy. I do believe in the paranormal, but haven't ever experienced it myself until a few days ago. First off, I live in Edmonton, Canada and we have a lot of jaywalking here. On this day, I was driving with my kids to pick up my wife from the train station. Where I'm driving, there is a two-lane road heading one way, a grassy median, and another two-lane road in the other direction. 
On my left, I notice a man standing on the median, looking like he's preparing to cut across the road. As I pass him, I look in my rearview mirror to see if he is, in fact, jaywalking across the road, only to see that the man has vanished. He was wearing bright clothing and was hard to miss. He was neither on the median still, nor was he on the other side of the street. He was just gone. I haven't even told anyone about this yet, as I'm still racking my brain trying to find an explanation for what I saw. I've been very interested in time slips and reality shifts lately, and I can hardly believe that I may have experienced it firsthand. It could have also been a spirit, but I couldn't say. I have great interest in the paranormal, but it rarely manifests for me. Thanks for listening to my story. Keep up the great work, and keep those strange stories coming. Sincerely, Shane. Our last midweek mystery comes to us from Anonymous. Anonymous' story is called Painful Numb Feeling. Anonymous says, Hello. I hope you're doing well and taking care. I shared this story before in a different area, but never heard it come up. I believe this information below might help other people. For my story and memories, they start from when I was very young up till now. I will cut some details out to make this as short as possible. I want to apologize to you and the listeners if this is a long story, but please kindly understand that everything is important. When I was younger, we lived in a mobile home, and we then moved into an actual home. The landlord asked us to move into this other home, as the people living there had just disappeared. Here is a little background of why they might have disappeared. I remember after coming back from trick-or-treating, maybe around 3 a.m., with my parents and siblings, we passed this house, and I saw this strange object on top of the house. This object looked like a sunny-side egg, but everything was gray and had soft, even curves. Kind of like what people say a UFO looks like. I did see this bright LED light coming down from it towards the house. When I saw it, I screamed with excitement to my parents, That's a UFO! Both my mom and my dad said no and told me to shut up and go inside our house. I asked them the next morning, and they kept saying it was just a Halloween decoration, a fancy balloon, and I let it be. We were settling into this new abandoned house, so my father was making changes. One of those changes was the burnt backyard wooden green porch. I remember looking up, and there was this perfect round circle on the ceiling of this porch. My father was removing it, as there was no more use for it due to the damages. Time went on, and I also remember seeing these skinny short beings throughout our hallways while using the bathroom. My mother had a rule that we couldn't close the bathroom door, as my sister once got stuck in the bathroom. Anyway, one of these nights, I woke up needing to use the bathroom. I left the door open and started my business. As I was looking at my toes, I could hear something running from my parents' room towards the bathroom door. As I looked up, I saw this skinny gray being sprint through the hallway. I got up and didn't even flush due to the fear of what I saw, and I peeked towards the way that it ran. I saw these bright LED lights coming from the outside, and I ran to my room. I do not remember much after that. Now that I'm older, I connected those damages to the green wooden porch. They were from where I saw the bright LED lights from the balloon hitting the house. As well, those short skinny gray beings might have been aliens. So now, to present time, I started hearing a lot of scary stories which can depend on the topic. I never understood why alien stories made me so uncomfortable, so I would skip them. Maybe it was because of what I saw that night. I finally decided that I could not skip them, as this information given by others could help me, and it did. As I heard these stories, for some reason, memories that I had blocked out started to come back. Things they said, for some reason, I was starting to remember. I then decided I couldn't be scared, and I looked into this. I decided to really think about it at night, and for it to be the last thought of the night. In a way, helping my subconscious remember that I needed to get this information. The one thing that I have so far is the feeling of how it feels to be under those LED lights. Our body produces its own electrical currents by chemical and other reactions. Some of this electricity is used by our nerves. Well, the way those things bring you up to their ship or paralyze you is by controlling those electrical currents within you. 
It's like if they had this strong magnetic field, object, or energy that helps them control those nerve endings, or electricity, within you. It is painful, though. Imagine every point in your body, location, or area, feeling as though you are being pulled. This is why you become paralyzed and you cannot move or control your own flow of electrical current to make your muscles move or react, especially if you are panicking, are in shock, or in fear. And I, sadly, have felt this again. I was sleeping at my boyfriend's, and I then woke up to this sudden bright light and that numb, painful feeling again. I then remembered from hearing in a podcast that if you move just one finger or concentrate on whatever area and then move it, you actually come out of this trance and of their control, and it does work. Before I did, though, I heard a voice tell me, you are coming with us, and in my mind I said, no, I'm not, and when I said not, that is when I was able to move my pointing finger. I was scared to look out of the window, but I could still see the bright LED lights outside. After they left, I woke up my boyfriend. I don't know why I hadn't before. I was so scared and explained everything to him. He just hugged me and let me sleep in his arms. Many people want to see these beings and experience this, but it is not fun. It is horrible. I hope someone who is going through this hears my story and finds the information helpful. We need to share more so we can get more information on how to protect ourselves. I ask all listeners, even if you think your story is lame or short, to please share. Those things are just here to experiment on us. As we come to the end of this edition of Midweek Mysteries, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for tuning in and supporting the podcast. And a special thank you goes out to Candice, Michelle, Juan, Shane, and Anonymous for writing in and sharing their experience with all of us. If any of you have thoughts, advice, or a similar experience that you'd like to share with one of tonight's storytellers, you can email me, and I'll be sure to forward your message onto them. Have you witnessed something unexplainable? If so, and you'd like to have your story shared on the podcast, please contact me at paranormalmysteriespodcast at gmail.com or visit us at paranormalmysteriespodcast.com and click on the Tell Your Story link. All of our contact information can be found in the show notes. Until next time, I hope you all have a safe and healthy rest of the week, and we'll see you back here on Sunday with part two of the Roswell Interviews. From all of us at the Paranormal Mysteries Podcast, thank you for listening, and please remember, don't wait for the unknown to come to you. Get out there and find it. <laughs>